Hi, this is going to be a tips and tricks in under five minutes and yes, I am timing it. A big part of doing repairs is soldering but also desoldering. Desoldering is removing solder from the board so you can remove components and replace them with good components. I've seen a lot of people do a lot of weird things with desoldering. One of the standard ways that I see people do it, which is wrong, is they take their soldering iron, they heat up the pad, and they try to push the leg of the component back through the board to make it loose and then move to the next lead and the next lead and the next lead trying to push it out. That's bad, don't do that. Most of the kind of products that you'd be working on like this Newtone intercom board, this is a consumer grade fiberglass board. It's not a super high quality board. It's not what you would find in an Apple laptop or a piece of Agilent or Hewlett Packard test equipment. It's consumer stuff. So it's as cheap as they possibly could make it. And the problem with trying to push leads through with a soldering iron is that you overheat the solder pad, which is part of the tra copper trace on the back of the board, and the adhesive that holds it to the fiberglass board will fail, and then you'll lift the pad and it'll tear off, and then you're screwed, unless you know how to fix it. So don't do that. A good way to do it, a traditional way to do it, is by using one of these. This is a old fashioned hand pump vacuum desoldering tool. This particular one right here, I've had since 1976. This is the one I bought or got when I was in high school and took my very first electronics class. And it's very simple, you push down here, you put the tip, you heat up the joint with the soldering iron like this, you put the tip over it and you go like this and it's supposed to suck up the solder. I stopped using one of these probably in the early 80s because my personal opinion, these are junk. They're very awkward to do and a lot of people not good with the two-handed thing. So you can get one of these. I looked this morning, you can buy one of these on Amazon for under $7. So that is an option, not my first choice. If you don't have some type of vacuum desoldering tool, then you're gonna either need to get one or there's a third alternative. I looked online, now my vacuum desoldering tool cost me over $1,600 because I use it every single day for hours and hours at a time and I need something that will hold up and last and be trouble free. You can buy sort of no name brand ones. On an average, you're gonna spend at least 150 or $60. If you're gonna do more than a dozen repairs on some different things, then it probably pays for itself. Another reasonable way to do it is you get a bunch of this. This is desoldering braid. It's copper braid. This happens to be MG Chemical brand, which is what I buy. It comes in a variety of different widths. It has some flux already in the copper, and all you have to do is place the desoldering braid over the solder pad that you want to remove the solder from. You put your soldering iron on it, and as it heats up or wicks the solder into the copper braid. Sometimes it gets stuck like that. But now you can see on the end of this, there's solder in the braid. To make it work better sometimes, you can add a little flux to it. Now, I have a little bottle of flux here. This is Kester 186. It's sort of the go-to most common flux that there is in the world. You can also buy what's called a flux pen, which is basically a, an application pen. And then what you do is you add a little more flux to this before you use it. The flux helps transfer the heat from the soldering iron and makes the solder flow into the braid even easier. Think of it as lubrication for your solder. And that's a good tip. So desoldering wick, easy to use, very inexpensive, and that's your tip for the day.